Hey guys, Yenta here. Want to do a really quick stream on Hydra build and ZVZ. So for new Zerg players going into Ling Muta, especially Muta and ZVZ and other matchups, is a little bit problematic because Muta have a have a little bit of a ramp up time. Using Muta has a little bit of a ramp up time. You really need to learn how to micro Muta for you to be effective with Muta. Um, Unless you're playing some kind of macro style where you just get so many muta that you can aim with your opponent. But it tends to not work in ZVT, it tends to not work in ZVP because eventually the other player will catch on and make like Mass Irradiate, make Valkyries, make Corsair. In ZVZ it can work, but there's been an alternative, a newer alternative. An easier alternative uh, is probably a better way to, way to say it. Easier alternative in the Hydra build. So let me show you how this build works. The build that I'm going to show you here is a multi-hatch 12 pool build. It can be used to ling all in or it can be used to transition in a macro store sort of kind of style of play. But it doesn't really matter what opening build you open what does matter is that your opening build has a second hatch at the natural. And you need to have that second hatch at the natural early so that you can transition into spores to stop the other player from going and using Muta and, and, and killing you. You should not go Hydra build on one base because the Muta player will never let you get the second base once the Muta are out. So yeah, this is definitely a, a two-player build and you should definitely optimize for getting a hatch at your natural as fast as possible. So what, what can we do? We can do a 12-pool expand build. We can go like 10 hatch or 9 hatch. And then 9-pool build. You can go an 11 hatch build, although that is pretty risky in ZVP. You can do a economic 9-pool where you go 9-pool then make uh, Overlord Extractor Trick to get 10 drones, only make 6 slings, don't get speed, immediately plop down a hatchery. What Ariador is doing here is he's going for this economic 12 pool build. So he's getting a pool on 12. Once he gets his pool on 12, he's going to drone up to 11 drones again, and then the 11th drone is going to go make a hatchery at the natural. Now he's going to uh, go back to up to 11 drones. Uh, it was actually a 12 drone, I think that made a hatchery. I was looking at Crossy. He makes six lings, and after he makes six lings, he makes another hatchery. So he's got two hatcheries down here in the natural. This is a very hatchery intensive build. It can be used defensively. You can use it offensively with like a late lingal in. What you do with it depends on what the other player is doing. As soon as you get that next hatchery, make another pair of lings. And yeah, uh, you, you, like at this point, you should know if the other player is 9 pulling you. So, how does defense look like versus 9 pull? It looks exactly like a 9 pull versus, versus 12 pull. If you see lings coming in, you gotta pull 3 drones maybe even pull four drones. You may not be able to make this third hatch right away. Um, just get in here, defend, wait until your hatchery is up. You can get an earlier gas instead of waiting for this third hatchery, but it plays out exactly as you would expect it to play out. Versus 12 pool, you're gonna have equal link counts. Versus 12 hatch, you aren't have to, gonna have to worry about early links. So you go up to about 10 lings, right? If they're doing some kind of different, they're doing some kind of like a later pool build, then you want to make a creep colony because right now we're going to transition heavily into droning. Your gas is taken after the third hatch. So th this is 12 pools versus 12 pools. So it's a similar situation. Let's actually hide Crossy's vision. Make it a creep colony so that we can go heavily into drones. This build requires heavy droning. 
you can't really support Hydra without a lot of minerals. And it's the same for the other matchups. If you're going Hydra Lurk and ZVT, or you're going 5 hatch, 6 hatch Hydra and ZVP, you need to make a lot of drones. You can see that after we made Link Speed, and we're only really making Link Speed in the case where we see the opponent is heavily droning or the opponent isn't making enough Lings, um, so that we can short circuit this build and just go Link all in off of three hatches. So that's why we're making link speed. We're also making link speed so that it's, 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 we're able to fight better versus some kind of link all ends. So this was a bit unfortunate. You really want your links kind of covering your ramp and maybe even this hatchery down here covering your ramp as SimCity so you don't get a link run by. We get a link run by. There's a couple of drones, but it's not the end of the world. Eriador lost three drones there, but Got to adapt to this, recover, chase around lings for a while. We're going back to droning. Drone, 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 ignore these lings. I mean, in the game, you're not going to ignore them, but in this replay, ignore the lings. Drone, 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 drone. Now, what do we do next? Around, it depends on what build you're playing, right? Uh, you want to start an Evo Chamber when their Spire is at about 80%. Um, when their Spire is at about 80%, you want to start an Evo Chamber. When your Evo Chamber is like half done, you want to start some Spore Colonies. This is why we pull drones off of gas, because we need heavy minerals now to be able to make Spore Colonies in Evo. So we do that. We can start off with one Spore Colony placed well. And then, as soon as we have our first spore colony done, we get a second spore colony in good locations. So what should the location of the spore colonies look like? Well, it depends on your starting location. But generally, uh, you want this spore colony to be like in the middle of your hatchery, and the one above it also wants to be in the middle of the hatchery here. This starting location uh, is pretty harass harass free it's easy, it's easy to defend with spore here and here because you can't have muted down here you've got the end of the map saving you and over here all the muted can, can really only get behind the minerals here um, i think if the if this spore colony is one hex to the left it's still going to be able to kill muted here and if it's in this position then crossy should be able to harass this extractor for free so maybe not the greatest placement but good enough uh, if we're in this starting location, then we'd make the spore colonies in different places. We'd make the first spore colony up here in the middle of the hatchery. It's going to interrupt your mining, but that allows your spore colony to cover your extractor from getting harassed by Muta. And since it's in the middle of the hatchery, it should allow you to cover Muta back here behind your minerals. The second spore colony, put down here. If you put it over here, then over here you're going to be open to meter harassment so you want to put it down here if you see the other zerg player not expanding and going heavy like wanting to kill you right away with mass muta then you add a third colony right here below your hatchery then all three of your spore colonies went together and they should have good coverage what about the natural this natural is is going to be hard to defend um, you're probably going to need to go up to three sunken colonies here to defend this well. Even four sunk or four spore colonies to defend this well. Uh, this one here covers your minerals. This one here covers this side, and probably another one here cover this side. And they're, they're going to need to be kind of within range of each other. Otherwise, they can just pick off a single spore colony and then get access to harassing whatever else. Like if I was cross, probably go to plus one muta attack. Uh, get up to like 11 muta, kill a spore if it's here, and then I have free access to this sunken colony, this hatch. And really, if he has access over here, then he's able to kill any of your lings that are here. And then you can switch from muta into ling muta and even run up into the, into the main base. So not ideal. Going back into the build. As soon as you get the spores up, you want to start 
um, plus one carapace on your evo chamber. You need to start mining gas again, of course, but you want to start plus one evo chamber, uh, plus, plus one carapace on your evo chamber. As soon as you start plus one evo, uh, plus one carapace on your evo chamber, you can get a hydralisk then and start speed, hydro speed. You can see here that Ariador is being very defensive. He added another sunk, uh, spore colony here to protect his ramp. He's adding another sunken colony here um, to make sure he doesn't get linked all in. This is fine. You're very drone rich, about 30 drones right now. It's going to go up even more. So you can go ahead and do that. Getting your upgrades going. You can see that he started carapace now. Uh, getting hydro speed now. And this is about the time that you get your second gas. And once you get your second gas, you want to get a second Evo. Speed this up a little bit. Another thing you want to know is he's actually making another spore colony over here. He's really scared about getting muter harassed here. Uh, he even sees the muter coming in. Uh, the other Muta, the Muta player is going to have two options. They're either going to go 5 Muta into Econ. 5 Muta is enough to kill drones. And they're going to try to kill as many of your drones as possible. Or they're going to go into Heavy Muta and skip on the Econ. If they go into Heavy Muta, all you need to do is make drones and sunken, uh, spore colonies and you'll be fine. If they go into the other build, the economic build, then you're going to have to be patient and make sure that you wait for your upgrades. So let's talk about that. In this build, Hydra aren't very good against Link Muta until they have at least two Carapace. So the timing to A move the other player is when you have two Carapace, preferably when you're at 2-1, two, so two Carapace and one range attack, or 2-2. Two, two. That's your timing when you A move. Before that, once you get plus one Carapace, you can try to pretend to move out maybe force the other Zerg player to make a lot of Sunkins. But before then, I would not really commit to an attack because Ling Muta is going to be very effective versus you. But if you get your upgrades, every plus one Carapace upgrade is going to reduce Ling Muta damage on you by 25% or something like that. While every attack upgrade is only going to uh, increase your attack damage by about 10%. So Carapace upgrade is very, very important when doing this build. This is why you're rushing that carapace upgrade. Once you start your attack, you start getting a layer. You want to start getting a layer because layer unblocks you being able to get plus two, plus two as your next upgrades. So you'd go plus one carapace, plus uh, hydra speed, plus one attack, layer. Then you would get hydra range, and then as soon as layer is done, you start your plus two carapace and your plus one attack immediately. We don't have a crazy amount of drones. Um, we're not like on 40 drones, we're about on 30 drones. And after that point, we can just make units like crazy. So we can see here that area door is probably on like three groups of Hydra at around 10, 11 minutes. And this was when you can threaten a little bit to move out. So he's, he's threatening to move out. Let's see if Crossy is making He's not making many sunkins. He did take... Okay, he has two sunkins here. So it's probably enough if they're making Ling Muta at this point to, to just stay on two sunken colonies at his second and his third, if you're on the other side. It's only when these upgrades kick in and that you really need to add more sunkins. What do you do behind this? Behind this... You're trying to not die the linked backstabs. Um, behind this, you're trying to take your third. You're trying to secure your third. After you secure your third, that's... Um, actually, after you start your plus two, plus two, that's when you get Queen's Nest. So after you start your plus two, plus two, you get your Queen's Nest because you want your Queen's Nest to get Hive. You want Hive in order to unlock Hive. Hive unlocks plus three plus three, and it unlocks the filers. See, so Ariador is seeing that um, Crossy 
might have been a little bit open to a Hydra attack. It's Michael here. He's doing pretty well. He's able to effectively on 1-1 one, one, null out the enemy's army. That's really good for him. But he's not able to kill anything. So they're mostly even. Getting his third base. And now he wants to start building back up and hydrate. That's all I wanted to show you in this replay. I'm going to show you another replay of like a night pool opening. This is a replay of Gruus doing the Hydra build versus me, starting off of a economic nine pool. So for an economic nine pool, you build nine drones. Once you build nine drones, you make a spawning pool. You get a you get a ninth drone. Then you do extractor trick. Extractor trick is when you don't build an overlord. You go and build a gas and use the fact that you drop down in supply to make an additional Zerg Egg, so you can get up to 10, 9 on just drones. Then you make an Overlord, and by the time your Overlord is done, you should have 3 larvae to make 6 Lings. And now you're banking up, banking up, banking up, making Lings, non stop Lings, and go into a hatchery at your natural. So with this opening, you have a very fast, you have very fast Lings to defend, and you have a second hatchery very fast. And if the other player goes a hatch first build, they can... You can put pressure on them. So here I went for, I believe I went for 10 hatch, 9 pull. So 10, 9, 9, 9, 8. And he got very good trades. Very, very good trades. He's continuing my blings. He didn't make any more drones putting on pressure, putting on pressure, killing a lot of my lings with very good trades. And that's how he's dealing with my kind of link all in. It's a little bit hard to see because our link colors are very, very close together. What does he do behind this? He's still making lings. He made a third hatch when he had minute money. And now he's making a sunken colony, and now he's transitioning into lots and lots of drones. Right, sunken colony. So my link speed is done. He needs to be defensive now. He's coming in here. Because he had very good trades versus uh, my links at the start, he's able to defend this. And now he can go into drones. It's a little bit of a different setup than the game I showed you last uh, last time around, but again, he's just transitioning now into drones. So any kind of opening where you take your natural relatively fast, you can transition into the Hydra build. And then from there, it's pretty much the same. You're going to have many hatches, you're going to be able to make many drones and recover economically, and then what you're looking for from the Zerg player is you're looking to see when is there layer timing, when is there spire timing. In this game, because I went for a Ling all in, I'm actually in a worse situation because I'm nowhere near Hive, so we can delay getting Evo and getting Spores for a long, long, long time. I hope this was uh, gives you sort of an insight into, into the Hydra build. It is pretty strong, especially in lower levels of CPL. This was the only build that I did before I got into tier zero, and it worked very, very, very well. It's, it's hard to play against.